Hello friends, this is a video on fungal mount. As we all know that fungi are eukaryotic organisms that basically include microorganisms such as yeasts, molds and mushrooms and these have been classified under the kingdom fungi. The best suitable medium that is used for isolation, cultivation and maintenance of these non-pathogenic and pathogenic species of fungi and yeasts are your Saberod's dextrose agar, then you can also use potatoes dextrose agar, but out of these Saberod's dextrose agar is one of the most readily used media for the cultivation of fungi. If we look at why we are using this medium, so this medium basically contains a high concentration of glucose around 4% and the pH of the medium is low acidic at, at around 5.6 which is favorable for the growth of fungal species as well as at such low pH the bacterial growth gets inhibited. Next, we will try to understand the basic structure of few important fungal organisms. So, as what we can see in the picture are two important fungal organisms. One is Aspergillus species and second one is Penicillium species. Both the groups are important like for example Aspergillus species find its wide use in industrial applications like in the production of organic acids. Similarly if we will talk about Penicillium species these are widely used to generate or to get the antibiotic that is penicillin. Now when we look at their structural aspect what we can observe is that these two groups of fungi basically contain long filaments which are termed as hyphae and from these hyphae what arises is a long tubular structure that are called as a conidiophores. These conidiophores end up into another structure which in case of aspergillus is termed as vesicle while in case of penicillium it is termed as a metula. In case of aspergillus the vesicle gives rise to another structure that are called as phyalites and from the phyalites the spores of aspergillus arise which are termed as conidia. As far as penicillium are concerned, the metula itself bears the spores which are termed as conidia. So basically, aspergillus and fungi bear the spores which are named by the which are named by the name that is conidia. Next is the structure of mucor. Again, what we can observe in the picture is that these fungi also contain long filaments which we call it as a hyphae or mycelium and from these long filaments that is hyphae or mycelium what arises is sporangiophore which ends into septum and apophysis. This gives rise to another structure that is called as sporangium and it is this sporangium that bears the spores of a mucor and these spores are called as sporangiospores. This is the structure of another fungi that is named as a rhizopus. The structure of a rhizopus is very similar to that of mucor and this differs specifically with respect to the root like structures that are absent in the structure of mucor which we term it as rhizoids. So again from the mycelium what arises is long tubular structures that are called as sporangiophores and these sporangiophores bear your spores and the spores are what we call it as sporangiospores which are bone inside the structure that is called as sporangium. 
this particular rhizopus is easily differentiated from mucor by the presence of these root like structures that we call it as rhizoids that is how the structure of a rhizopus then after we have understood the basic structure of these important groups of fungi the next question comes as to how we can observe these fungal organisms under the microscope so the method that is used is called as a wet mouth of fungi the procedure is very very simple whereby on a clean and grease free slide a drop of lactophenol cotton blue is placed this is the stain that is used to visualize the internal structures of fungal organisms reason being that the stain contains phenol that kills the fungal organisms the stain contains lactic acid that prevent that basically prevents the or protects the internal structure of these fungal organisms and it contains the stain that is the cotton blue that specifically stains the internal structures of fungal organisms so what is done after we place a drop of lactophenol cotton blue on the slide then we scrape or we take a small portion of the fungal culture and place it on this particular drop and tease it gently without disturbing its internal structure then we place a clean and grease free cover slip on top of this particular fungal structure and then it is observed under 45x under the microscope so this is the microscopic observation of aspergillus species that is aspergillus fumigatus so as it can be observed that the fungal structure is stained dark blue in color that is because of the stain that is cotton blue and we, what we can observe in the diagram is the long structures that is the fungal mycelium and or your hyphae which gives rise to your conidiophore and it is this conidiophore that bears this the is the microscopic yeah. observation of penicillium species again the structure is stained blue in color because of the stain that we have used and what we can see is the mycelium which are septated so the mycelium is divided into different segments and the mycelium gives rise to the conidiophore that bears the spores that we call it as conidia this is the structure of mucor species what we can observe under microscope is the long filaments of mucor that gives rise to sporangiophore and the sporangiophore bears the structure that is sporangium and within the sporangium the spores of mucor species are present this is the structure of rhizopus which is observed under the microscope and the microscopic observation again reveals the filaments that are the sporangiophores and these sporangiophores bear the sporangium within which the spores are present what we can observe is the foot cells that contain your rhizoid structures root like structures and that is how rhizopus can be distinguished or identified from with respect to mucor species so with this what we try to understand is the basic structure of four important groups of fungi that is aspergillus penicillium rhizopus and mucor by using lactophenol cotton blue staining method i hope the video would be useful for you all to apply this in microbiology practical thank you